This is London. Gentlemen, and welcome to a very special edition of LDN Capital TV here exclusively on the Fight Network. Coming up later in the hour, we'll be bringing you what's sure to be a classic match between former LDN British champion Gentleman John Ritchie and the UK's finest wrestling export, the anarchist Doug Williams. Plus, in the London Eye, we'll be unveiling the first ever official top 10 rankings in LDN. But right now, let's get down to ringside and join our commentator, Mr. TV John Atkins as we get ready to honour a man who has made a very special contribution to our great sport, referee Bob Stafford. Good evening ladies and gentlemen and welcome to LDN Capital TV. A packed show we have got for you this week. Coming up later in the hour we see the return to LDN of Doug Williams. But right now we are kicking things off with something a little bit different and a little bit special. We are about to honour one of the unsung heroes of British wrestling at LDN, our referee Bob Stafford. Let's go down to ring it out to Sanjay Bagger.
Fiona Fox here and this week it's a very special London Eye as we bring you the only official LDN rankings. LDN management and officials have finally released their rankings of the top LDN stars and we now bring you the top 10 wrestlers in the country today. Ranked at 10 this month is LDN Academy champion Billy Reynolds who retained the belt against tag team specialist and fellow LDN Academy graduate Travis last week but has success gone to his head? In at 9 is Tex Benedict. It's been a rough few months for the London Arizona native who hasn't been himself since returning from injury earlier in the year. Tex needs to return to his winning ways and soon, but blaming the fans for his failure won't help him at all. At number 8 is Chris Wilde, who has had one of the best months of his career, finally picking up the LDN tag team trophies with his partner Danny Williams. But these rankings are based on singles action and Wilde has also scored some big wins in untelevised matches. At number 7 is Ross Jordan, another man who has done well recently, but we feel he can do better if he puts his mind to it and steps outside of his comfort zone. Ricky Hype comes in at number 6 this month. The Welsh Wonder continues to score wins with the Dragon Challenge, but we feel he needs to start pushing himself against a greater calibre of opponent if he wants to climb the rankings towards the LDN Championship. At number 5 is the anarchist Doug Williams. Williams may be the UK's finest wrestling export, but this hasn't been his finest month here in LDN. Nonetheless, a top five position and a great platform to build from, we'll see Williams later this hour against this month's number four, the former LDN champion gentleman John Ritchie. Ritchie scored some impressive wins, but of late has not shown the killer instinct that kept the British Championship around his waist for the entirety of 2007. Mike Mendoza comes in at three. Last month's number one contender to the LDN Championship failed twice to unseat LDN champion Jorgos, so Mendoza falls two places. However, he still has a very strong win-loss record and is sure to get more shots at the gold in the not-too-distant future. At number two is the superstar Leroy Kincaid, who made an explosive debut here in LDN and put in some great performances, electrifying crowds the length and breadth of the country. We predict big things for this young man if he can remain focused. And the number one contender to the LDN British Championship this month is Danny Garnell. After emerging from the shadow of gentleman John Ritchie, Garnell has dominated the singles division in LDN, suffering only one loss in the past 30 days to Leroy Kincaid. And of course, the LDN British Champion is still Jorgos Christopoulos, who has successfully seen off the challenge of Mike Mendoza twice in the past month and continued to take on all comers at shows up and down the country. Congratulations to Jorgos and we bring you the official LDN Top 10 rankings next month. And don't forget to keep sending in your questions for the LDN mailbag. We'll be answering the first questions in a couple of weeks here on The London Eye, but you've still got time to get your questions in by sending me an email to askfiona at ldnwrestling.com and I'll answer the best ones on air. That's all for The London Eye for now, but we'll be back next week. Professional wrestler at one of three LDN training schools. For more information, go online to www.ldnwrestling.com. No 
sign of the urchins this week, however. And I don't know what's happened to John Ritchie. He used to pride himself on being the, uh, the hard man from East London. But for some reason, he now believes he is made of, of nobler stock. And I would be very interested to uh, question the genealogy of John Ritchie. Well, fans, we are very excited to see the return of Doug Williams here tonight. We have had a number of letters and emails requesting his return. And indeed, if you want to write to LDN, check out ldnwrestling.com for our contact information. Doug Williams, one of the most popular stars we have ever had on Capital TV. And we are very excited to have him back here tonight to take on Gentleman John Ritchie. And he is being absolutely mobbed here by the fans, and what a sight it is. Doug Williams, made in Britain. These are dangerous days. These are dangerous days. Shut up! I will. It's for you. And so it was. I came here to end it. This is an absolute... 
absolute insult to Doug Williams. of Kent and we are right here in Margate this week for LDN Capital TV and what should be a classic encounter six three-minute rounds two pinfalls two submissions or a knockout to decide the winner referee Chris Roberts assigned the contest and I have a feeling he's gonna have his hands cut out for his work cut out for him this week He seems to have a lot of problems going into this matchup. He's obviously not happy about something, but referee Chris Roberts seems to think everything's good to go. Doug Williams is chomping at the bit to get this one underway. So I, for one, can't see what Richie's got to complain about. He's not happy about something, and he dismisses the handshake from Williams. There's the opening bell, and we are in round one. Richie not ready. And the fans solidly behind the hometown hero, Doug Williams. Well, Richie's just not happy, full stop, I think. When he came out here this evening, he expected reverence and respect. And quite frankly, he received uh, very much the opposite of that. He was booed out of the building. And for someone who genuinely believes they were descended from nobility, that is quite a blow. Richie accompanied by his ever-present butler Ponsonby. There he is, looking on. Ponsonby clearly patronising the same milliner as John Richie himself. Richie in the ropes, and the referee forcing the break. And unlike some wrestlers, you do have to ask John Richie twice. He will take every shortcut going. Indeed, anything that's possibly to his advantage. And then we see a clean break from Doug Williams. And still Richie not happy. Blow to the midsection with what looked like a closed fist to me. Get him off. What? And sometimes it just doesn't pay to to wrestle by the rules, and that's what makes it such a challenge for the likes of the anarchist Doug Williams. Come on, Reggie. Come on, Reggie. Come on, Reggie. Come on, Reggie. Well, turnabout is fair play, John Ritchie. 
turnabout is fair play. Richie in no hurry to break the break at the ropes early on in the match. And you are only going to receive exactly the same now in return from Doug Williams. You made you made your own bed, you've got to lie in it. Richie gets a wrist lock on, but it's right on the bell at the end of round one. And Richie not very quick about breaking that either. These are dangerous days. Well, round one underway, and that was a real feeling out process for these two wrestlers. Both men just getting the measure of each other, testing each other seeing what they can get away with in the case of John Ritchie. But I think he might be wise not to raise the ire of Doug Williams. He might be getting away with it right now, but later in the match, I don't think Williams is going to put up with this sort of behaviour all night. Bell rings for round two. R Ritchie goes low. And that's an ankle lock. Could get an early submission. And I would say both men very clearly looking for the first decision. Two pinfalls, two submissions, or a knockout will decide the winner. And I would say the advantage would have to go to the man who scores the first decision in their favour. Richie sends Williams across the ring, meets him with a flying drop kick. Surprising athleticism from John Ritchie. And that certainly seemed to catch Doug Williams on off guard. And you can see Doug Williams' is, uh, corner person, none other than the LDN Academy champion, Billy Reynolds. And this is a great learning opportunity for Reynolds to watch one of the masters at work. It's a roll up from Doug Williams, and he got it in round two. The first fall. John Ritchie was spending uh, a little bit of time arguing with, with Reynolds at ringside. Williams simply came in for the roll up, and he got it. Just two rounds in, and Doug Williams is 1 0 up. and be arguing the case at ringside. And as I was saying, this is a great opportunity. Oh my goodness, this is a great opportunity for Billy Reynolds to just watch two of the greats at work. And as I was saying that, Richie seemed to be distracted. A roll-up from Doug Williams and two rounds into this six-round match, Williams scores the first pinfall. One nil up to Doug Williams. And these fans so delighted by that turn of events, they are just going absolutely crazy here. And we start round three, and Williams takes control straight away. No more messing around for Doug Williams. He wants to out-wrestle John Ritchie and end this one very quickly. Well, it's a standing count there from Chris Roberts. Ritchie sent across the ring. Back into Doug Williams' corner. Williams now sending him to the other side of the ring, meets him in the middle. And he has got something in mind, a big European uppercut. And I think he might have knocked John Ritchie out cold. John Ritchie just staggering on his feet there. And that was a big, big European uppercut to the jaw. 
And John Ritchie really needs to rethink his strategy for this one. As we are into the third round. And John Ritchie is losing one fall to nothing. Pulled back in the hard way by Doug Williams. And straight back out again, scurrying to the outside. Into the arms of his butler, Ponsonby, and his uh, associate, Barry Ryan, as well. And fans, I've got good news for fans of the LDN British champion. The championship will be defended next week as Yorgos puts his belt on the line in a triple threat match against Tex Benedict and David DeVille. Oh, Richie comes over the top with a double leg. Nelson, he gets a cover and the shoulders are down for three. Right out of nowhere. Right out of nowhere. Comes over the top, double leg Nelson, hooks the arms and the legs. One, two, three. And just like that, John Ritchie levels the playing field. At the end of round three, at the halfway point of the match, the scores are tied, one full apiece. And I thought John Ritchie was simply wasting time, but I think he was just lulling Doug Williams into a false sense of security. Came back on the apron, Williams went to drag him back into the ring again. And this time Richie was ready for him. Hoisted himself over the top rope, put the legs for the double leg Nelson. One, two, three, and just like that, John Ritchie leveled, leveled the score, one full apiece. And the fans here in Margate are livid. Doug Williams not happy at all. Doug Williams not happy at all about that. He is asking the referee to keep a very close eye on John Ritchie. And who can blame him? The bell rings for round four. We are now in the second half of this contest. The score at half time, 1-0. And Doug Williams saying enough is enough. I have put up with these charades for too long. And I am going to turn serious right about now. The two men lock up. And that's the trouble with John Ritchie. It's very easy to get the wrong idea about the man. He likes to waste a lot of time and employ a lot of tricks, but he is a very, very sound scientific and technical wrestler. And believe it or not, he can easily go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Doug Williams. And that's what makes him so dangerous. And yet, just when you think you've got him figured out, you see a right fist there into the midsection and a rake of the eye behind the referee's back. I wonder if he should even be wearing those gloves. Has he been medically cleared to wear those gloves? Did the referee check them before the match? <laughs> Raking the eyes of Williams along that top rope. And that is very painful indeed. It burns and it causes the eyes to water. And frankly, if you can't see John Ritchie, it's very hard to wrestle him. And Williams never saw that attack coming. He is just trying to hold on to that corner for dear life. But no, catches himself on the middle rope. Comes off. And sends Ritchie into the ring. Now Ritchie, oh my goodness. Just crushed himself on the middle rope. Anything you can do, I can do better, said John Ritchie, but on that occasion, he wasn't right. And Barry Ryan lending a supportive hand. But John Ritchie may have severely hurt himself there. He tried to balance on those middle ropes, realised he's not as young as he used to be, and just slipped and landed right on his bottom.
And so at the end of round four, the score's tied still at one fall apiece, just two rounds left. These are dangerous days. We're staying here. Have I ever let you down? Trust me, this is big time. Good afternoon, sir. Just two rounds left to score the winning decision. And John Ritchie just lubricating his thighs. And drying himself off. And we heard our ring announcer ask the fans not to throw any more rubbish into the ring, but that is just how incensed that they are getting at the actions of one John Ritchie. He can bring out the worst in everybody. Not least of all himself, seconds away for round five. As we enter the penultimate round of this contest, the score's tied at one all. Williams, of course, went ahead in round two, got the early advantage. And Richie tied things right back up in the next round. And now he's shown that he means business. Get him off. Another rake of the eyes. And this one's getting out of hand. Well, Chris Roberts didn't see that one. He's not sure what happened. He can certainly suspect. And Doug Williams can tell him. But if Roberts didn't see it, he cannot call it. And so Richie escapes a second public warning. But a stomp to the head. And sent Doug Williams back into the corner of John Ritchie. And right back to those eyes on the rope. And it stings and it burns. And Doug Williams knows he is in trouble. And there is nothing he can do about that. The eyes are perhaps the most sensitive part of the body. And if Williams can't see, he may be forced to forfeit this one. He goes down low, takes down Richie, and that could be all. And that was what I would call a desperation cover there from Doug Williams. Caught Richie out of nowhere. Well, rightly so, a second and final public warning for that low blow. And now Richie has got to be very careful indeed. Because one more indiscretion and he faces an instant disqualification. And he's just choking out Doug Williams in that middle rope. And the fans very much on his case, they know exactly what he's doing. Hooks those nostrils right back. He was getting those fingers right up there. Who's Doug Williams now? And Richie seems remarkably proud of himself. But it's still just one fall apiece. And there's still just over a round to go. Williams looks to be in trouble, but this match is anyone's, it could end a draw, of course. And I'm surprised John Ritchie not going for that win a bit more forcefully. He seems to have Doug Williams tied up where he wants him. I don't know why he's not trying to finish him off. And just twisting the jaw around. And Chris Roberts being very lenient indeed. The bell rings and we are just moments away from the final round. And Doug Williams still lying in the corner. And his corner man has just come around to him. Oh, and there's no call for that whatsoever. No call for that whatsoever. 
As I said, the bell rang and Williams actually unable to return to his own corner. Ricci looked to be offering to help him up and instead just laid the boot in even further. And you can see Williams' eyes are still giving him trouble. Seconds out for the sixth and final round. The score still one fall apiece. And Richie very, very confident now. We are just minutes away from the end of the bout. Still one all. But Doug Williams still in his corner. And his eyes still appear to be giving him trouble. And, well, hold on just a second. Hold on just a second. Did you see what I just saw? All along, I thought he was just raking the eye. I think he had something in his hand there. I think he had something in his hand, and I think referee Chris Roberts sees that as well. I don't know where he's keeping it. Is it in the glove? No wonder I was going to say, I mean, he has been raking those eyes. And again, we can see it very clearly now. Great camera work there from our LDN camera crew. Very blatant. That's not just a regular rake to the eye. He clearly had some sort of rag. I don't know if it was soaked in a chemical or, or what was going on there, but no wonder Doug Williams having so much trouble with his eyesight. His eyes are water and they are red. And he is unable to move. We're in the final round, the score still one all. But Doug Williams absolutely incapacitated by the damage done to his eyes. Well, a knee to the midsection and a big European uppercut sends Richie flying. Williams now comes off with a knee to the skull. Right in the noggin, there's a cover, that could be all. No, it's not, just at the last second. Richie able to get the shoulder up. But I think Doug Williams knows exactly what's been going on. Some sort of rag, I don't know if it was soaked in a, in a chemical. But he's got hold of it. He has got hold of it. And he is just rubbing it in the face of John Ritchie. He is getting his own back. And the bell has rung. rubbing that chemical soaked rag in the face and in the eyes of Doug Williams. Williams finally gets hold of the rag and wipes it in the face of Ritchie. And unfortunately, he doesn't have quite the cheating ways of John Ritchie. And he got caught by the referee. His anger and aggression got the better of him. And Roberts had no choice but to disqualify Doug Williams. And so one way or another, John Ritchie's plan Worked out for the best, and he got the win here. Two falls to one, it went down to the wire, round six. The chemical soaked rag may have been used against him, but he's still walking away with the lion's share of the pass here tonight, and Doug Williams is furious, and he has had enough, and he's going off to Ponsonby. But Ponsonby gets out of the ring just in time, and Richie hurrying to the back like a scalded animal. He is delighted to win the winner's share of the purse here tonight. He doesn't want to go back to Williams for seconds. What a disappointment for Doug Williams. We have been looking forward to his return for many weeks here on Capital TV. And how regrettable that it should end in this manner. No argument there. You can see what you want, Richie, but let's say this. How about you and me in a rematch next time in Margate? 27 months over, right here. You can bring in the US if you want. I'll be ready for you next time. Don't you worry about that. Well, fans, we are out of time.
time, but the rematch has been issued. We'll see you next week on Capital TV.